Hi, my name is Masha. I'm the blonde from Coding Blonde, and today I'm interviewing Ashley Chloe, or Ashley Sun, as you might already know her on Instagram. She's a beautiful person inside and out. She always puts a smile on my face whenever I see her posts on Instagram. And she's also a software engineer in the Bay Area who is currently traveling throughout Asia. It's a five months long trip and it's awesome to watch remotely. In our interview, Ashley gets very real about her experience and her journey as a software engineer and she shares all of the obstacles she has faced and how she has overcome them. So if you are currently learning how to code or you're struggling with motivation or you're just entering this industry and thinking about how you can develop your career, make sure you watch our interview because it's going to have some motivational advice for you. So let's watch the interview. Hi Ashley. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Very excited to have you on my channel once again. What does it mean to be a software engineer? What do you do? The software engineers or software developers develop software. <laughs> um, I think there are lots of different types. Um, you have like the front end developers um, who are creating anything that you interact with on the browser, right? Um, I'm a back-end developer, um, so, and I'm on the infrastructure team at a fintech company called Lending Club in San Francisco. So on the infrastructure team, we write a lot of automation and software, um, so not directly facing our like users, but anything that helps to deploy the applications that face the users. So my team helps to maintain like reliability, scalability, um, stuff like that on the site. Um, we also are trying to automate um, a lot of the processes around deployment. So we tried to make deploying applications in production and actually in every other environment, um, we try to make that more efficient, um, less of a headache for our developers and also for our ops team. And then my team also helps to um, take care of production, so if anything goes down in prod, um, we kind of jump on top of that. Um, we troubleshoot production issues. What else? We kind of do a lot of stuff. Oh, we help with deployments. Um, and then build a lot of software around, I guess, like the packaging of our applications, deploying them, um, building them, running them, monitoring them, um, all this stuff. We, we build that software and then kind of try to give it to the engineers um, to so that they can self-service um, and kind of look after their applications on their own. That's awesome. It sounds like you're doing so much. <laughs> it's funny. It doesn't like seem like that much. And then I start talking about it and I'm like, it's really hard to describe what we do because like we do a lot of different things. <laughs> but I would say like my day is like 75 to 80 percent um, coding and the rest is either um, helping with production issues or like talking to like the engineers and work like either in meetings or like helping them troubleshoot stuff. And then, and then maybe like five to 10% is doing deployments. And for all of that stuff, do you use, cause I guess because it's touching so many different areas, do you use a lot of different technologies and programming languages or do you focus okay. on something specific? Um, so, for our language, we I it's just Java. Um, we yeah, mostly all, all Java. I've had to use like a tiny bit of Python occasionally and like some Bash scripting, but not a lot. Everything is primarily Java. Um, we use like Jenkins for build and deploy, like CI/CD, um, AWS for our cloud stuff. We've recently been getting more into um, containers, so we're using Kubernetes for that. Um, so. Currently, I'm working on a project, like a containerization project, um, and that's using Kubernetes, um, HAProxy, and Envoy um, for the load balancing and then to manage the containers. Um, I'd say that's probably what I work with most, like on a daily basis. And that's, that still sounds a lot to me. That's, that <laughs> feels like you, you need to constantly kind of update your knowledge and stay on top of everything because I guess new technologies are coming up and you're like, oh, 
Yeah, I don't know anything about it. That's kind of, so that's how I felt at first, because first we were only data center. And then we moved some of our stuff to AWS. And so AWS is like, AWS is really complicated. They just have like so many services. And so I remember I also had just started, I was like fresh out of college, I think maybe like a year out of college. And so it was like very overwhelming. I was just like, there's so much, so much stuff. And then each service is like so many options. And I was supposed to build um, all the automation and orchestration around deployments in AWS. So like using AWS code deploy, um, EC2 instances, auto scaling groups, um, what else? ELBs. Um, so working with all of that was like very new and it was kind of daunting. It's, it's like just so much to learn. Um, but now I feel like it's just like, I'm like very comfortable with it. I definitely wouldn't say I'm a pro, but like, um, but um, yeah, I, I feel like I have pretty good knowledge, at least enough to get me, get, get by in the company. Um, and then that's how I feel now about like Kubernetes. Um, it's like a whole different, not a whole different world, but like a lot of different concepts, things work differently. Um, so just figuring out and just, I feel like with new technologies, it really helps. You kind of just have to play with it. I usually will just Google like, technology name and then like tutorial for beginners so like 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 ec2 tutorial for beginners or like kubernetes tutorial for beginners um and then whatever comes up like i'll usually just run through that sometimes even like multiple times just to like get comfortable and like like okay this is what this is doing because i feel like you can read all the documentation you want but for me personally like it just doesn't stick like i still am like i don't know what this term means i don't understand um, I'm a very visual learner too, so um, I guess like by actually doing it, like typing it and then seeing what it returns, like maybe you'll run into some errors and I'm like, okay, what's happening there? Um, I feel like for me, that's the best way to learn a new technology. It's just kind of by just doing it. Yeah. Fair enough. And yeah, like you said, playing around um, probably is the best way to really understand how the structure works and what this does, what this does, how does it look and feel? Mm-hmm. Right, right. And how did you get into technology? I know we've recorded uh, a video already on the topic about your journey, but, and people can watch that, I think, in this corner. How did you get into the industry? How did you learn how to code? Um, so I studied electrical engineering and computer science in college. Um, it was not something that I planned to do. Um, I applied with different majors to different colleges and um, happened to apply to UC Berkeley with an undeclared engineering major um, and I got in. So I, I ended up going there and um, I, as an undeclared engineer, I had to take a MATLAB course, um, which I really enjoyed. I liked learning those concepts and like kind of it was a new way of thinking. Um, so I really enjoyed that class, so I ended up taking more classes like in that vein, which was CS. Um, and once I started taking CS classes, um, I kind of knew like, okay, like I, I'm going to be eeks. Um, so my end of my second year of college, um, I declared electrical engineering and computer science as my major. I feel like the other video has a better, <laughs> a better explanation. So yeah, guys, watch that after in one of those corners. There will be a link to that. <laughs> but how did you learn how to code? Was that during the, your uh, computer science course or did you have to take additional classes after that? What was that experience like? Okay, so my first like CS coding course, um, it's like the intro course at Berkeley that everyone in CS and Eeks has to take. Um, it's it's a, a Python class. So Python was the first language I learned. And then the second one after that is Java. And then all the classes after that kind of are either in like Java or Python, or at least the ones I took. <laughs> I planned it that way. Um, um, so learning to code, yeah, that was just in class. So the thing about like being a CS major or EX major or whatever is that you have some people like me who have like never coded anything in their lives. Like I didn't even know what like hello world was. And then you have on the other end of the spectrum, people who have been coding like since they were born out the womb, pr like practically, like they're just like so good. I'm like, why are you even in school? Like, you genius, you're messing up the curve. 
Um, but yeah, so it was, everything was very new to me. It was very difficult um, just learning to think it's like a new way of thinking. It's, it is literally like learning a new language. Um, so that was all, it was hard. It was really, really hard. Um, so learning in class, I feel like in class, most of the stuff went over my head initially. I would have to like go over it many times before something would stick. And again, just like try it out. Um, I went to office hours a good amount for extra help from like my TAs um, on like homework and stuff. <laughs> And I think the good thing also about office hours is other people who are there, other students who are there are really um, willing to help out. I feel like overall, like, it's a pretty, at least at Berkeley, I don't know if it's everywhere, but at Berkeley, it's like a pretty collaborative environment. It's not cutthroat or super competitive. Um, or maybe they just weren't threatened by me. <laughs> but um, yeah, everyone's like very willing to help, um, even other students. So just going to office hours and everyone working together on problems was was nice. Um, I also had like a little group of Eeks friends who we all like had like the same exact schedule. One of my friends like literally the exact same schedule freshman year um, and actually part of sophomore year too. So we had all the same courses so we would always just like do homework together, study together. Um, and that really helped not just with like the studying in the school part of it but also with my sanity and not wanting to like having to be afraid that I would drop out of school or anything um so yeah I learned everything in my courses and then in office hours and then my own study time fair enough no that's that's awesome that it has prepared that university has prepared you for the journey that you have now and Having experienced all that and now being in the industry, what would you recommend for people who are trying to start their journey into tech? Like where to focus, where to start, you know, all those. As much as I learned in like my four years of school of like how to code and stuff like that, honestly, like it doesn't really prepare you for a real world job or like in a way, like you know how to code, you know the concepts, you know what a database is and like basic networking. Um, terms or like stuff like that but I think once you actually start working I would say like in my first like six months of working full-time I feel like I learned more than like in my four years of school which is not saying that school was like useless or like a waste of my time and money or any of that but just like they're very different like you can have basic coding knowledge but then once you start working there's like so many other so many other aspects besides just coding. There's like working with other teams, like maybe you have a PM, um, maybe your like company is agile. Um, you probably then have to like, at school, right? You just work on projects like, I don't know, like make the shark eat the fish or like, I don't know, like code this game or like make Pac-Man, stuff like that. Um, there's no real world impact or yeah, like real world impact. So once it's done, you submit your code and then like the teacher, whoever they run their thing and it grades it and it's kind of done. You don't like, you're done after that. Like when, when you start working, like you code your application and then either you have to write tests for it, like QA or you have to test it. It has to go through this whole process of, of, of passing tests, like getting, getting published, getting built and like getting deployed into production um, and school I feel like doesn't really prepare you for all of that other stuff it just focuses like on the coding part um, so there's just like so much more than just coding um, so yeah school's not like useless and it's important to know those basic concepts yeah I would say like just having real world work experience is where you will do most of your learning like once you start coding eight hours a day, like five days a week, like you'll learn really quickly. Wait, sorry, what was sorry, the question? No question? I feel like I didn't, I didn't even answer, answer it yet. yet. I just wanted no, to say that. To be honest, you are, um, you are basically answering that. Uh, the question was, what would your recommendations be for someone who is entering it? And it sounds like you're recommending wor oh. real world experience. Okay, so <laughs> going back then, um, if you have never, coded before or taken a class like it's it's awesome now because there's so many like online courses and online resources that you can use 
Um, but what I would say, like, to get good, like, like holistic experience is, like, take something that you're interested in, whether it be, like, I don't know, like, gardening or, like, I don't know, or Instagram or cooking or, I don't know, whatever hobby. And then, I guess, think of something that you, like, think of an app, basically, that you would find useful and then just, like, build it or build, like, a basic version of it. I feel like that is kind of... A really good way because you're coding it and then you also have to figure out like you can even like if you um i think amazon you can get like a personal account and like it's not too expensive to run a couple of instances and then you get experience like building your application deploying it um it's not just like coding like a main function or something like that it's it's real experience and i like if you pick something that you are actually interested in i feel like it'll be like a fun side project for you because it's something you're actually passionate about. It's not like building Pac-Man or like, I don't know, just like some arbitrary arbitrary project. Um, so I think they're like, and obviously if you're like first time coding, maybe before that, I'd say take some like online courses or tutorials um, just so you get the basics down. And then, but your first project, I think like, it, it's just like make an app and it'll be difficult. I think with coding, when you first learn, it's just like so foreign of like a topic and the like the way like the way that you have to think about things is just so different that like it took a long time for me to like kind of like get the hang of it and so like I don't know the first the first few weeks or months or whatever like I feel like you'll probably be banging your head on the wall but I want to say that's normal <laughs> um it was normal or that's how I was like you'll just be so frustrated I think that like the times in my life when I've been the most frustrated have been when I have like a bug or my code is not working and I don't know why. And it just like, oh my goodness, it drives me so crazy. And like, you will definitely have many of those moments when you first are learning to code. You'll just be like stuck. Um, but my recommendation for that is just to sleep on it. And sometimes the next morning you're like, oh, I totally know what to do. Anyways, but then like also the best feeling in the world is like when you write code and then it, you run it and it just like, it works perfectly the first time. And you're like, yes, like there's no bugs. Like it worked exactly as I intended. Um, that's a really good feeling too. But yeah, so I'd say just, just create a little app. It's good experience. I think you'll get exposed to all the different parts of software development. Um, like similar to what you would be doing in like a full-time job. And it's something that you then have to put on your resume when you apply for a full-time job or for whatever as a software developer. That's awesome. Thank you so, so much. This, I'm sure this was super helpful to anyone watching this because I know there are a lot of people watching who are just starting out and looking for ways to really understand how things work and especially when it comes to you know this being useful for the job application because that's the next step right once <laughs> right, you start right, right. learning how to code so thank you so much this was super helpful yeah of course thank you thank you so much ashley for being so real and so honest about your experiences and struggles i hope that it has motivated some people who might be going through the same thing to keep on going and keep on achieving because you guys can do this and I hope you are enjoying your travels in Asia. It looks so much fun. Guys, if you're not following Ashley on Instagram, you're seriously missing out. So go follow her right now at Ashley Chloe and the active link will be in the description. Please let me know what you thought about this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and also you can find me on other social media at Coding Blonde. Thank you for watching guys, have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye!